And certainly we know that preservation and presentation of archeological artifacts are crucial components of our work. And Dr. Lawrence Garrity, better known as Larry, is President Emeritus of La Sierra University and Associate Director of CNEA and former Director of the Madaba Plains Projects Excavations at Tel Hispan. Larry, please tell us more about what La Sierra is doing to engage and educate local communities in relation to the collections with which we have been entrusted. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, present here toward the end of this long afternoon. Um, by now, we hope that uh, many of you who have not visited La Sierra University will want to come to campus and uh, take a uh, look at CNEA and the uh, many treasures that we have here. Um, some of you will be familiar with the campus, others won't. So maybe let's give you a little uh, trip to uh, campus and take a look at what it would be like. As you turn off the 91 freeway, you get onto Riverside uh, or Riverwalk Parkway and uh, come to the entrance gate. And this would, once you've come through the entrance gate, this would be the view that you have of a winding road that uh, leads up to the campus proper. Uh, from a sort of an aerial view, you can see that entrance road at the bottom uh, and middle of the picture. And currently, as you go through those uh, trees and, uh, and greenery in the center, on the left is the School of Business. That is currently the only one of the entrance buildings that uh, really exists. And to the left of the School of Business, which is marked there, is the region that is planned for the Performing Arts Center. And to the left of that, but out of the out of view, is the uh, CNEA, the Center for Near Eastern Archaeology. So that would be to the uh, left as you enter the campus. If we would go to the right, the largest building uh, is on the right. That's the uh, gymnasium. Uh, sometimes we call it um, uh, various other names, but it's surrounded by facilities that are planned for the, um, the upcoming new uh, facilities that uh, go with, with wellness and with athletics. The largest building there in the center is uh, identified as the uh, Museum and Visitor Center. And that's something that we want to talk a little bit more about. But taking the next uh, uh, view, this would be definitely an aerial view. We've come up from the bottom in the center. You see the blue uh, uh, pool that's at the top there of our view. On the left would be the School of Business. And to the left of that, again, the uh, Future Performing Arts Center. Uh, to the right, all that complex of uh, rectangular buildings would uh, be with the athletic and wellness. But uh, just to the, to the right of the Blue Pool is a large structure that uh, is going to be the new University Museum and uh, Visitor Center. Um, let's look at what the, uh, an architectural firm in Los Angeles who's uh, been helping us plan the entrance to the campus have suggested this is the facility. So it's a three, three floor building. At the bottom, you have uh, the visitor center where people uh, arrive and go up to the second uh, floor, which would contain uh, classroom buildings and a, um, uh, an auditorium. And then up at the top would be uh, three exhibit areas. And we'll talk a little bit more about those three in just a moment. But here on the left is the artist's rendition of a sloped uh, auditorium that looks out over the campus, although it can be closed for, uh, for showing um, movies and uh, slides and so forth. Over on the right is another uh, angle uh, looking at this new uh, structure facility. Uh, here we're at sort of the back of the campus, looking across the School of Business, which is right in the center of uh, this picture. And then looking over to the left of there is the new uh, University Museum. 
in the bottom left would be the current administration building and dining commons to the to the left. Uh, over to the right, you see uh, uh, the city in the distance. So another um, sort of view uh, that we've been talking about. Um, so let's leave those campus views and think about this new uh, uh, museum and visitor center that we've mentioned. And uh, this is a little brochure that we've prepared. And if any of you need a copy or would like a copy of that, uh, get a hold of us and we'll be happy to, to send you one. Uh, on the front is the little baby uh, ape that appeared in the National Geographic magazine a few months ago. This is from our collection uh, at La Sierra University. Um, as we open this brochure, it describes the excitement of discovery that we hope to build into uh, our, our students. Uh, the next opening uh, gives you an introduction to the philosophy of La Sierra University and the education that's offered. And we hope that the collections that have been gathered at the university over the last hundred years are part of the transformational uh, education that uh, we offer our students. And uh, the education utilizes these, uh, these collections for, uh, for education. The next spread here is the first of these three uh, collections that we call Natural History. Um, it's amazing the treasures that exist there. We have some of a wonderful collection of gems, um, some of the best cut gems on the, on the West Coast, along with a, a mineral collection, uh, mineral spheres. Um, we have a collection of all the minerals of the Bible uh, that are on, on exhibit. Uh, and then also the, um, the natural history contains the, the um, animals, so the amphibians, birds, uh, uh, reptiles, and so forth an amazing array of animals that have been freeze dried rather than stuffed. And an Osir alumnus has uh, invented this way of doing it. And uh, it's amazingly effective in preserving uh, these animals. So this would be the natural history uh, collection. Um, the second is what you've been hearing about this afternoon, the Center for Near Eastern Archaeology and its archaeology collection. And here you can see some of the uh, staff members and volunteers who are working um, with the materials that are that are here the, at, uh, at La Sierra. Uh, William Deaver, probably the leading living biblical archaeologist in the United States, who's visited us on a number of occasions and uh, carefully gone through all our materials, it says has said that this is the largest collection of materials, archeological materials from the Jerusalem area that uh, exist in the United States. He's very impressed, not only with the variety, but with the quality. And he says that he's never seen a collection where so much can be done in terms of preserving uh, or presenting uh, the uh, exhibits and so forth. And you've got a little taste of that for this afternoon, as you've heard people describe uh, the Center for Near Eastern Archaeology. This is the third collection. It's an anthropological collection. Over the last hundred years, many of our graduates have gone out around the world in service opportunities of various types, and they have brought back um, materials that illustrate the cultures that they've worked in. And um, so we have uh, an amazing array of shrunken heads and uh, battle uh, garb and um, spears and arrows and uh, feathered headdresses and uh, all kinds of artistic um, uh, objects that have also been uh, preserved. So you see, we have archeology, span uh, natural history and this anthropological uh, collection. We hired a specialist who works on museums to um, suggest to us the kind of square footage that would be needed to work with and illustrate these. And uh, these two pages uh, are the results of what he recommended. So the green would be the archaeology section. 
Um, on the left, you can see this, not necessarily the layout, but rather just the square footage that's amassed there. On the second page there at the bottom, you see the green in another way uh, exhibited. The, uh, in the center, the light green would be natural, natural history, and at the bottom right would be uh, anthropology. Uh, the yellow would be the uh, lecture hall and so forth. So some of the details of, of the uh, square footage is illustrated there. Um, then there's a donor options and naming opportunities that uh, uh, are available here. Uh, general, for, for the small gift of $10 million, you could name this facility. <laughs> Uh, or if you wanted to choose natural history, that would be 5 million. Or if you wanted to name the archeology span museum portion, uh, another five, or the, um, the anthropology would be four, 4 million. So in other words, we're talking about uh, a $30 million project, about half of which we have in hand and uh, much of the rest, we think we know where it's coming from. Uh, COVID has put a little dent in our ability to, uh, to proceed on a more rapid basis, but we're still looking forward, uh, hopefully this year, to securing the other commitments that uh, will enable us to complete uh, this project. So if any of you have, um, uh, would like to talk to us about a naming opportunity, uh, we'd certainly be glad to send you this brochure and talk to you about uh, what, what can be done. Any questions? Nobody is calling in, offering their millions, but uh, we do hope that you'll approach us uh, as you've had time to think about this. Thanks, thanks very much for, uh, for uh, thinking with us toward this new facility that will enhance our campus and the education that's offered here. Uh, we also want to say thank you for helping us think about um, preservation preserving the past. We are committed to preserving the past. That's what archeologists do, but we've now learned some, there are some new layers to our responsibilities, including presenting, including community archeology span too. New strata, so, if you will. And that's right, it's a very strata. <laughs> um, let me say one other thing too, that um, I, th I, think, I think Jennifer has one word, go ahead. We have one question that is, how can students be involved in the museum project? And will student archeological digs and projects be presented there? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's a really short answer for a, a good <laughs> question. Um, currently with archeology, span students are involved with a lot of what we do here at CNEA. We have students, um, uh, we're thinking about archeology span students, undergraduate and master's students who uh, work here, who do scanning, who work in the lab, who uh, uh, Don uh, helps to direct in uh, reconstructing pottery like we've got here. Mm -hmm. So we have that, and that's probably, going, is kind of the foretaste of what we'll be looking for in the museum. The new museum will have not only the three collections, it will have three labs, three lab uh, laboratories. So we will continue to do our research. We'll continue mm -hmm. to curate. How many collections, Don, do we have here that are not curated yet? Because people have really found this is a place to bring their artifact that they may yeah. have collected over their lifetime. Right. So what'd you say? I think at the moment we, are, we have about three or four private collections that have come to us that are uh, next up to be accessioned and curated and yeah. Right. And we are anxious since many of the artifacts that come to us this way have no provenance. And that's a huge issue in archeological ethics. We don't know where they came from. We can't construct their story. If we excavate something and bring it to our lab like we have next door, the Ameri lab, mm -hmm we can say everything about this artifact and where it came from. With what is in the collections lab where we're sitting right now, we can't do that. And whatever we do, we are absolutely to the core committed to do nothing that would encourage more looting right. because most of what uh, is donated is, well, a part of it has been purchased legally. Mm -hmm. um, 
but a, a lot of the, the artifacts that, that make their way through Jerusalem uh, have no provenance and have been looted from tombs. That's where mm -hmm. they come from. Yeah. And so I don't buy artifacts. Right. We don't buy artifacts. We will never display these artifacts in ways that would encourage people to go after more of them. Absolutely. We have committed ourselves. We have an education or an ethics committee um, and we have committed ourselves to do the best we can with these artifacts that are not provenance um, in an educational way, including not just what they were used for in the past, um, how many uh, do we have, what about the coins um, like we've heard about, but including these came from sources we don't know, and we don't want to do anything to encourage more people to loot their heritage. So that's part of our educational goal. That's what, that's in part what drives us. And we've had to think seriously about that. Mm -hmm. There are stories as recent as yesterday about, well, stories and reports um, about museums in other parts of the country that have uh, biblical era artifacts that are not provenanced. And the ethical, the, the, the drive to make sure that we're all on the same page ethically so that morally we do nothing to encourage the destruction of cultural heritage is a very strong one. Not everybody observes. Uh, mm -hmm. We've tried to commit ourselves to that. I should say one other thing that's not archeologically related, but, uh, and that is that you and I are distanced. <laughs> we don't have masks and we've committed ourselves for this weekend to be in this place, there are several of us here, we're all maintaining distance, we're all wearing masks when we're not on screen. So we want to, we want to say by that, let's, let's beat this COVID. I mean, there are some fairly simple rules. And so let's all commit ourselves to doing what we can to uh, stop its advance. Absolutely. The last thing that we want is to see any of us or our friends sick yeah, with this right. you know we we want to be healthy and we want to get back to normal as normal as can be and we hope that happens fairly soon otherwise thank you so much for joining us we appreciate your being here thank you to the crew you can't see all of the crew but we've mentioned them before uh, been stellar and we appreciate it immensely thank you for spending these three hours with us uh, talking about preserving the ancient past